Hi everyone, thank you for your interest and all your great questions. I'm Jan Erik Vitala, founding partner of Axopar Boats. Let's get this Q&A started. When will the new 28 be launched? Well, we continuously push to make new and cooler products, which means that the Toxapar 28 is already in its third generation when the new model will come out. This means that it needs to be better in every single way imaginable. It needs to be more fuel efficient, it needs to have more utilization of space, it needs to be more functional, and of course look way more spectacular. So we push our development to make all our ranges more sustainable and long-lived. So we don't push to make a new model every single year, but we do push to make every new model year improved. So every single model year we do, we introduce new functionalities, new options, new modules that makes and improves our products. But to make a completely new range, we really, really, really try to push to make the ranges long-lived in terms of sustainability. But the new 28 Mark III will be launched when it's ready. How come the helm seats don't recline on the Oxopar 28 cabin? Well, they do swivel and turn around so that you can sit uh, and facing people on the aft sofa, but they unfortunately don't recline. When is the new 37 coming? Well, we compete only against ourselves. So in order to make a new product, a new better product, we look at how can we improve our own products. We really don't look at the competitors in this sense. The 37 we have today was launched in 2019, so in terms of sustainability and long-term design and functionality of our products, we really don't feel that we're in a hurry to renew the 37 any day soon. It's an award-winning concept, award-winning boat, it's been sold out every single year. But again, something to remind you, every single year we update our boats with new options, new modularities, new functionalities. So in that sense, every year we introduce something new on our ranges. Any plan to adapt some of the new features from the 45 to the new 37 as options? Well, yes, definitely, for sure. Uh, what they will be? Well, you will see them later, but for sure. Every single development we do, no matter if it's on a 22 or 25, 45 or a 28, 37, we mix and match new functions, new options, new modularities, and try to really think how can we adapt an option for a 45 or an idea or a concept from a 45 even to a small boat as a 22. So in that sense, that's what makes our day stick, and that's really what makes us wake up in the morning really thinking about what cool things we could do in the future for our range. What's the lead time between order and delivery of a new 45? Well, this depends a bit on your dealer in your region. So for us, uh, as a factory, we're pretty much sold out for one and a half year already on the, on the 45. We launched it in Palma, I think like four weeks ago. Tremendous success. I think we have as a factory over 100 orders already. So uh, I would say this, check with your dealer for availability. Is there any thought of doing a rear door entry version of the 45 cross cabin? This is something that we hear now and then. We listen to our customers closely and uh, at the moment we are not able to do that. It affects so much on the whole interior layout of the boat. But if the demand will be big enough in the future, we will definitely consider this. This goes for, of course for everything we do. So keep the feedback coming. We love it. When will the new 45 model be able for sale in Norway? Mentioned before, we already sold over 100 boats on our dealer days in Palma. So I would recommend contacting your dealer in Norway to ask for the closest available slot. How did your passion for boating start? Well, that goes really, really far into my childhood. Um, so I'm born in Vasa, Finland, which is a coastal town closest to Sweden. We are known to have small cottages out on the islands. So every weekend you always go out to your summer home. And um, well, at the age of eight, I actually started working uh, for a cruise ship or, or a small sightseeing uh, sh uh, ship that took tourists out on the islands around. And I was more or less the, the guy taking care of the tickets, brewing the coffee and, and uh, things like this. So that's at my age of eight. And I think I finalized uh, my first boat or I built my first boat when I was age of 15 which I actually continued from my father. So my father made the outerior, exterior of the boat. I fulfilled it and made the interior of the boat at age of 15. How could Axopar develop so fast? Of course, the quality of the boats, but what else? Bravo. Well, simplified, stay nimble, stay close to your customers, 
understand their needs and what they want. Uh, try to stay out of the corporate mindset, try to keep the company on an entrepreneurial spirit, make fast decisions, learn from your mistakes, develop, evolve, compete against yourself. What is the lengthwise oriented step above the waterline for? So this probably means the second chine we have on every single Axopar. That has actually become a design feature of Axopar, but there is way more functionality into that chine. So, all Axopars are based on rigid inflatable boats, rib boats, and the rib boats have big pontoons on the side. So we were thinking, how can we make something similar to this, not in the big extent of, of a rib boat, but something in a similar fashion. So we added a second chine, and with this second chine, we get an added stability point. So the boat rests way nicer at anchor or at standstill. It also creates bow lift when we're driving the boat in bad weather, so, it, so the hull wants to stay above uh, the waves. Thirdly, when we do hard turns with oxopars, also this second chine actually adds also stability, so the boat doesn't heel over so much and creates this sensational uh, driving experience that all oxopars are known for. How many oxopars exist in Greece? I'm falling in love with the 45, maybe plus one soon. Cool. Uh, Greece, uh, well, we're shipping our boats all over the world, but I think already in Greece, I would say, I don't have an exact figure, but I would probably say around 100 to 200 boats in, in the archipelago around Greece already. Will your boats ever open up factories in Africa? Well, we're selling our boats all over the world, even in Africa. So I don't know if it's going to be called a state secret that we probably will be producing oxopars sometime in the future in a different continent than Europe. Dealer in Jordan. Unfortunately, not at this moment. We have a situation where we are not able to make enough boats for our current dealers and our current customers. And this has actually kept us down a bit in expanding our dealer network. So uh, I would recommend to have a look at our website, oxopart.com, and just have a look at the dealer closest to you. But we're expanding every day. Janne, what is your vision on the US powerboat market? That's a big question. The US market alone is the world's biggest market, simplified. Uh, it's also our biggest. So the 40% of our exports goes actually to US. So it's one of our most important market there is. I would say the US power boat market is open today to more diversified products, which means there's a possibility for boats entering from the Nordics and or brands from Nordics and European uh, to enter into the US markets, but they still need to be built to the quality and functionality the US customers are learned to expect from a boat. I also see that there is a possibility and there is a great movement in the US to get new boaters by utilizing boat clubs and other ways of owning uh, and sharing of boats. But also at the same time I see cost awareness rising in the US due to inflation of raising prices, raising fuel costs, energy costs everywhere around. But this is also a super opportunity for Axopar, where our concept really comes into its strength. So Axopars have always been made with full focus on their functionality, their drivability, but also not to forget one of the real key features here is the fuel efficiency, seaworthiness of our boat, but also the real competitive pricing of an Axopar. So here we really truly have a great opportunity in the US. Any plans for a boat with a flybridge? Just a little raised like the Paragon 31. The Paragon 31, to be honest, is one of my favorite boats. It's one of the first boats I was developing and co-founding when we made uh, Paragon Yachts in 2008. And I really loved the idea of, of the low flybridge. It was done in 2009 and still looking at it in 2022, it still stands, its design and features and functionality still stands the nick of time. So. Uh, Let's have a look at that. Maybe. Wing doors at the aft. Well, we perfected the gullwing doors in the front cabin already, and now it's a standard on the new 45. So, well, why not wing doors in the aft? Uh, let's see what we can do in the future, but it still always comes down to functionality first. So if we get the functionality right, for sure. Will there be more Mediterranean options in other models? Yes. For sure. Uh, so one thing that I'm happy to announce is that for model year 2023, we will launch the Mediterranean edition for the 37 cross cabin, which also means that the whole interior will also be available as a Mediterranean option. Will power bank slash generator option return soon? Well, we already have the power bank on our 37. 
we also introduced a new way of doing a power bank on the 45. So for sure, power banks will be the feature for getting more power and running heavy electrical equipments on board our boats like ACs, wet bars, uh, whatever. But as a genset, uh, we don't do those from the factory. Janne, what do you think of foils for pleasure power boats? If you look at the success of Candela, foiling Axopar soon. Well, this is a really interesting concept, foils. Um, and foils are some really high-tech uh, gadgets and they require some really high-tech electronics in them as well. So not only is it requiring some special knowledge from the manufacturers to make them work, it also will require some knowledge and special care from the owners. So in that sense, it's a bit of a tricky feature to scale up into multiples and into bigger, wider ranges of boats. Candela, I absolutely love their attitude. Uh, I love their new approach for getting more people on the water in a new way, uh, in, in a new efficient way. As I mentioned, scaling will probably be a challenge for them, but I'm really looking forward to see how they accomplish this. But when it comes to new technology, whether it be electrification or foils or whatever sort of new technology coming out into the boating industry in the next years, make sure 100% Axopar will be a part of it and Axopar will be involved in development works in many of it. If we bring them into our production or not, that remains to be seen. Kommer Axopar erbjuda ett fossilfritt drivsmedelsalternativ för 2023? Do you plan on using electrical engines? Well, uh, Axopar, as an industry forerunner and working with industry leaders in their respective fields, for sure electrification will be a part of boating in the future. I can also probably say this, that it will of course also be as a part of Axopar, in to get more people on the water. Then again, there's a question of to what extent and when. This fully, fully, 100% relies on when the infrastructure will be ready and built for charging and for, for being able to handle uh, electrical boats, when we find more sustainable battery manufacturing methods and we find a good way of reducing costs of this electrification on boats. Just to give you an idea, the electrical engines today, together with their battery packs, are twice the cost of the boat itself. So we still have some work to do in that field. But on this topic, for sure, stay tuned. What is your opinion about hydrogen fuels for future Axopar models? Well, hydrogen for sure is one strong candidate for future fuels. Again, this comes into the question when there will be an infrastructure. For sure, Axopar will also be looking into hydrogen. Um, one thing to just realize, Axopar boats in our development today are already built in a fashion that if, even if we ship a boat tomorrow with a petrol engine, that petrol engine can be swapped for an electrified engine and a battery pack later on in its life. So uh, with an Axopar boat, whatever we ship the boats in today doesn't mean that in 10 years from now that is the way the boat is going to be propelled. So we still have one question. Demanding more merch, clothes, equipment for the boats, as cutlery, plates, towels. Okay, demanding. Well, great. Uh, we hear you 100%. So on this topic, Corona slowed us down a bit. The availability was less, the, the way of uh, developing this was, uh, you know, harder to do during Corona times. But we're getting back on track on this topic, so stay tuned. So, thank you for reaching out to us. We love and appreciate all your valuable feedback. This is what makes our Axopar experience and your Axopar experience better. See you soon on the water, sharing that Axopar adventurous spirit.